Nothing intensifies a rivalry like a good heel. In the 2000s, the long-standing soccer rivalry between Mexico and the United States reached a new level thanks to one talented, relentless, and extremely obnoxious American player. While Landon Donovan was involved, this rivalry looked more like beef. Mexico's men's national soccer team lost to the United States in a 1934 World Cup qualifier. And then they dominated the US for the rest of the century. When the ball dropped on Y2K, Mexico's all-time record versus the US in international men's football was 27-9-5. That's across tournaments in the Americas, friendlies, and World Cup qualifiers, although no meetings in the actual World Cup. Mexico dominated, especially at their daunting, high-altitude home field, Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. In the 1990s, the US claimed a couple victories, more than usual, and during that same time, new talent was coming up the pipeline. Landon Donovan grew up in Southern California, where he learned to speak Spanish, supposedly so he could demand the ball from his teammates. As a teenager, Donovan joined Florida's famous IMG Academy, where he showed immense promise. Donovan assumed a starring role on the United States U-17 team, with whom he defeated Mexico in the 1999 Junior World Cup. Donovan began a pro career in Germany and also rose up the ranks of his national program. He starred for a U23 US team that came just short of a medal in the 2000 Olympics, and later that year, he got called up to play with the senior team. Donovan's first playing time for USMNT came as a surprise during an October 2000 friendly against Mexico. When Chris Henderson limped off the field with an injury, Coach Bruce Arena called on Donovan to get his cleats tied and get out there. All of a sudden, Landon was on. In the second half, minutes into his debut, Donovan received a perfect ball from Clint Mathis, wiggled past the Mexico keeper, and poked home the first international goal of his senior career. Soon thereafter, Donovan received another great ball down the left side and turned that into his first assist. The U.S. beat Mexico 2-0, or as they say in Spanish, 2-0, thanks in large part to an 18-year-old sub who relished every minute of his debut in front of a Los Angeles crowd that included plenty of Mexico fans. That match was the U.S.'s second straight victory over Mexico, and then they won two of the next three meetings. Entering the 2002 World Cup, momentum in this rivalry resided north of the border for a change. And, wouldn't you know it, that tournament gave us the highest stakes matchup in the history of this neighborly rivalry. Each squad advanced out of group play into the knockout stage. And, on June 17, 2002, for the first time ever, Mexico and the United States faced off in a World Cup match. One would send the other home from Korea. Before the match, Donovan highlighted Mexico's dislike for the U.S. and went as far as accusing Mexico of dirty play when things weren't going their way. Well, come match day, Brian McBride put the United States up almost immediately. And the final nail came from Donovan, who headed home a perfect cross from Eddie Lewis in the 65th minute. Off came Landon's top, and out came the opponent's frustration. The shocked Mexican side answered not with a goal, but with a parade of fouls. I count six bookings in the final 25 minutes, including Rafael Marquez's red card. The US eliminated Mexico and advanced to their first World Cup quarterfinal thanks to a final score of 2-0, a, a scoreline that would become the defining American meme of this era. American players held on to what they perceived as pre-game arrogance from the Mexican side and the rough play of those final minutes. Donovan himself later claimed that during that match, Mexico forward Luis Hernandez threatened to find and kill his mother. On the other side, just pure devastation and dismay. So USA versus Mexico had some extra juice. And uh, speaking of juice, 2004 was a big year for a rivalry that looked more and more like beef. Back with the U23 national team in February, 
Donovan participated in a pre-Olympic qualifying tournament in Mexico. Donovan led his countrymen into the knockout stage, setting up a critical semifinal match against the host country. Hostility had already found the Americans. Throughout the tournament, the Mexican crowd chanted the name Osama, as in Osama bin Laden, during USA games. Donovan and company got the deal. The, the Mexico fans hated them, a natural response to their recent dominance in the rivalry. But Donovan objected to the political nature of those chants and added that he'd been the target of attacks he called crude and personal. It says a lot about who they are. As for the Mexican players, Donovan again accused them of being dirty, nasty, of spitting and coughing and grabbing opponents where they shouldn't. Whatever the case, Landon didn't do himself any favors. There was an incident. The day before the Mexico match, a camera crew caught Donovan peeing on a practice field at Estadio Jalisco in Guadalajara. The headlines from this moment are terrific. I think you can guess what Orino means, and that second one is about him watering the grass. Anyway, the Mexican side dominated the actual game in a 4-0 romp led by two goals from Rafael Marquez, earning themselves a 2004 Olympic berth. While the American women won gold in Athens, the men's side wasn't even there to watch because of Mexico. In the meantime, Donovan's pee incident continued to generate buzz. American officials initially said it didn't happen, but people had seen the video and it really couldn't be denied. Donovan didn't say much for a little while. We'll come back to that. While the U23 team faltered, the US senior team, also featuring Landon, maintained its edge in the rivalry through 2004. 2005 brought back some stakes. World Cup qualification. Two Mexico-US matches, one in each country. That first game in Mexico City was relatively quiet Landon-wise. Donovan insisted the U.S. had a mental edge over Mexico, even at their high-altitude home stadium, and the 23-year-old did help set up a goal in his first ever Azteca appearance. But the U.S. fell by a score of 2-1. Mexico maintained its dominance at home. Then came the U.S. leg of the qualifiers, a September meeting in Columbus, Ohio, Team USA's de facto home. Perhaps emboldened by his home turf or by a comment Mexican goalkeeper Oswaldo Sanchez made about his mother, Donovan had a lot to say before the rematch. He said Mexicans didn't have lives beyond soccer. Players, coaches, fans, soccer was all they had. It made beating them even sweeter. If they were nice people, Donovan said, he wouldn't feel that way. He eagerly wanted to beat Mexico, and he expected to saying the U.S. was the better team at any venue but the high-altitude Azteca. Anyway, Donovan said Mexico could never really claim revenge for 2 not unless they truly returned the favor by beating the U.S. in a World Cup. This time around, the U.S. got the W. While Donovan squandered his own opportunity to score on an empty net, DeMarcus Beasley's goal in the 58th minute produced that familiar final score, 2-0. In the wake of the cup-clinching victory, Donovan unloaded, and it appears he did it in two different languages. He expressed his never-ending desire to see Mexico on their knees, humiliated and crying. He said the goals Mexico surrendered to the U.S. made them look stupid. They stink. Hopefully they'll shut up now for a few years. If they didn't respect the U.S., then they better keep learning because the U.S. was the best team in the region. Oh, and now that the U.S. was headed to the World Cup, he said they could win it, which didn't exactly pan out in Germany the following year. Mexico made it out of Group D, but they never got the rematch they wanted because the U.S. ate shit in Group E. One of the U.S.'s first opportunities to rebound from that miserable World Cup was a February 2007 exhibition in Arizona against Mexico. And surprise, the friendly wasn't very friendly. Donovan evaded his old foe, Sanchez, to make the score dos a cero, and Sanchez retaliated with a cleat's first trip attempt on the celebrating Eddie Johnson. After the loss, Mexican players refused to shake hands with the Americans, and Donovan scolded them for bad sportsmanship. Later that year, in the lead-up to the CONCACAF Gold Cup final, Donovan kept going. Speaking to a Mexican sports periodical, Donovan said the U.S. was Mexico's daddy, 
said they were better in football terms, said Mexico was no longer the giant of CONCACAF, and singled out his disdain for the behavior of the Mexican keeper, Sanchez. The first half of that final made it look like Donovan might eat his words. Sanchez made some incredible saves, while Tim Howard watched a ball roll into the middle where Mexico's Andres Guardado punched it home right before the break. But when Mexico slipped up and committed a penalty in the box, it was Donovan who got to rub it in with a tying goal. Whew. Look at the relief in that celebration. And Landon's relief held. The U.S. went on to win the final 2-1. to one. Donovan and company maintained their edge in the rivalry for another year or two, and Donovan kept talking. He relished Mexican fans' hatred for him. He was flattered by it because it meant he was winning. And Mexico's mounting pressure to reverse that trend revealed mental weakness. He said it worked to the Americans' advantage. Another Dos Acero in February 09 bolstered that sentiment. It had been a decade, including Donovan's whole senior career, since Mexico beat the U.S. outside Mexico City. Defeating a Donovan-less B-team in the 09 Gold Cup final didn't quite break that pattern in any satisfying way for Mexico. Neither did another win at El Azteca in August. Although fans did seize the opportunity that night to pelt Donovan with all manner of garbage while he was taking a corner. Truly all manner of garbage, if you believe the reports. But Mexico still hadn't beaten Donovan away from their home base, until finally, in 2011, our rivals met in a Gold Cup final in LA, back where Landon made his beef debut 11 years prior. Landon was up to his old tricks. He scored to make it 2-0, and then did what appears to be the dirty bird. This was shaping up to be another dos a cero result. I would be demoralized, but the Mexicans were not. Pablo Barrera scored soon thereafter, then Mexico just poured it on to snatch away the title. Not quite World Cup revenge, but at least they could reclaim CONCACAF dominance. Donovan, lo and behold, was complimentary afterward. This was as dynamic a Mexico team as he'd ever faced, with game-changing new players. Indeed, as our beefsman neared his 30s, his relationship with Mexico seemed to mellow. Donovan, for instance, had nothing but positive things to say about the newest Mexican star, Chicharito. Donovan actually generated controversy by working for the opponent, starring in this commercial for the Mexican lottery that made fun of his status as a villain and also seemed kind of racist. Mexican fans still had plenty of reason to loathe Donovan, but with the notable exception of the above commercial, he was kind of done playing into it. Donovan's pro team, the LA Galaxy, had fixtures against Mexican clubs. Donovan was used to negative attention from those opposing fans. He called it ignorant, but beyond his control. And he insisted that for all the yelling he got on the field, people were perfectly nice to him out on the street. The twilight of Donovan's national team career included some feats against Mexico. In 2012, he won at Estadio Azteca for the first time. And in 2013, he scored his final international goal at home in Columbus in a World Cup qualifying victory over Mexico by a score of dos a cero. Perfect. Around that time and later, Donovan's quotes regarding Mexico demonstrate respect, reflection, and even regret. He has described what he thinks he owes to Mexican and Central American players. I owe a lot of my success to the Mexican slash Hispanic slash Central American Latino culture because that's how I started playing with guys from all over the place, all over Central America. And it gave me my style, the way I play. And so I'm very grateful for that. In this interview, he condemns his younger self multiple times. I ran my mouth a lot and I said a lot of stupid things and I was very ignorant and that caused a lot of probably hatred towards me. But I was, I was a punk kid and I was, said some really stupid things. Although this bit kind of sounds like that younger self. It's frustrating because this has been their world for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, this is all they know. This is the sport they know. Mm -hmm. So um, when we show up and it doesn't mean as much to us in that way. And you still win. And you still win. I think that bothers them. In 2017, Donovan said he didn't appreciate the extent of the rivalry as a young man and regretted the lack of respect he showed. 
Donovan has even explained, with some visible chagrin, how he came to pee on a Mexican soccer field in 2004. Basically, the stadium was locked and he had nowhere else to go. By the way, this photo? That is not the 2004 incident. This is from another pee incident, and there are actually more than just two. This one actually happened while he played for a Mexican team. But Landon is more mature now. As Landon Donovan has transitioned from old guy on club teams to arena soccer player to manager, he and his former Mexican foes can laugh about their former hatred. It's an appropriately charged, mutually respectful rivalry now. Granted, that exchange isn't always so straightforward. Donovan annoyed a lot of people when he publicly supported Mexico in the 2018 World Cup for a fucking Wells Fargo ad. That misstep notwithstanding, the rivalry settled a bit exiting the 2010s. More balanced and much less bad blood. But in the decade or two prior, that rivalry took a turn toward US domination and toward open hostility. At the center of all that nastiness, dirtiness, and stinkiness, you'd often find the same guy. Landon Donovan helped make a great rivalry into a very grimy beef. Thank you very much for watching Beef History. If you want to see some more beef or some more soccer stuff, then do some clicking down here.